Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Myers. I'm an assistant professor in the College of Pharmacy at Idaho State University. And I'm Josh. I'm a student pharmacist in my second year here at Idaho State University. And this is Decoding Degrees, the pharmacy edition. Pharmacy school. Can pharmacy school be done online? Kind of. Um, there are some didactic versions, so like the in-classroom learning that you can do online, but there is a lot of other things to pharmacy school, like um, community rotations, especially in your fourth year, it's all rotations, and that cannot be done online, that has to be done in person. And there's a lot of lab work that is done in person, compounding labs and pharmacotherapy labs that are hands-on with devices and procedures that you may need to know. How long is pharmacy school? I think it's like this long, or sometimes this long. Maybe even this long sometimes. Centimeters or inches, we're not <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what unit you want it in. Um, but it's typically four years. Um, there's typically two years of pre-pharmacy, like prerequisites that you have to uh, complete before you get into pharmacy school, but then the actual pharmacy school, the PharmD degree, is four years. So, let's say four. Four. Inches. No, I'm just kidding. Centimeters. Okay. Oh, I ripped it. Good, one job. <laughs> what are one pharmacy job. school prerequisites? So there are a good amount of them. Let um, me count the ways. Let me count the ways. Mostly it revolves around things like biology, chemistry, anatomy and physiology. Um, what are some ones that I Organic say? chemistry, regular or inorganic chemistry. There's physics, there's general education stuff like economics and maybe some public speaking things, mm -hmm. basic math things. A lot of things you do for a associates or entry level bachelor's degrees. I came into the program with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. You don't have to have a bachelor's before you get into the pharmacy program, but you do have to have the prerequisites done that are required at ISU. What careers can you have with a pharmacy degree? Oh my heavens, where lot. do I start? It, there really are a lot. So there is still community pharmacy, you know, doing pills and working with patients in your pharmacy. And there are uh, hospital clinical pharmacies where you're actually more like a practitioner. These days, the pharmacies being graduated are, are practitioners and they're not pill, pill counters. <laughs> Especially in Idaho. Yes. Yeah, Idaho is one of the most progressive states in the United States as far as, you know, pharmacists' ability to prescribe and, and do things like that. I don't like people. <laughs> so I, just say, Might be in the wrong I, I just don't like people. No. <laughs> um, mail order was great because you could go and go to work in t-shirt and jeans and you could do your job verifying the prescriptions and stuff. And uh, that was one of my funnest most fun, best fun. Anyway, I make up words too. And uh, there are lots of things, long-term care facilities with uh, pharmacies that Josh and I both worked at. Um, you, you do have patient, well, some patient, but mostly the facilities and the practitioners and you're working together as a team uh, to do that. But you can even go into pharmaceutical companies and a clinical research and uh, clinical studies that are done and work there you can now Amazon you know Amazon's got their own pharmacy kind of thing going and they need pharmacists as well too so um, there there's a lot a lot more things insurance companies maybe PBMs um, other other pharmacy related places research. maybe research yeah and, and even maybe teaching <laughs> imagine that teaching I don't know teaching sometimes yeah who should become a pharmacist if you have an aptitude for science and, and math is okay, algebra is okay, that's really all we really use, um, then yeah, pharmacy certainly can be, be one. And if you want to help people getting ready to go to college, pharmacy was introduced to me. And I'm like, oh, biochemistry, how living things work, that's kind of my, what I thought. And then pharmacy oh and now how medicine works in those living things i like it 
and I started out with a chemistry degree. I just, when I was doing my undergrad, I had an interest in chemistry, so I decided to pursue that and was looking into things that I could do with that. And a lot of the chemistry related things were lab work, which I like, but I like the patient interaction as well. <gasps> my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I like this question. <laughs> how much money do pharmacists make? Well, it really depends on how much they work. If they only work one hour a week, they might make $50 a week. If they, if they work full time, full-time salaries for pharmacists, and these are just like, just regular pharmacists. Um, I think it's around 110 to 130,000 a year in that ballpark. If you then go into any, any facility and you start working your way up, especially in a management side, in a hospital setting or in a, a research setting in a pharmaceutical development company, uh, like Pfizer or somebody like that, uh, you can start working your way up there and then, you know, manager level, director level, VP level, um, yeah, they make a lot more money. The last one on this card is, <gasps> did, did pharmacists really invent Dr. Dr. Pepper? <laughs> oh, I yeah. think it was just one pharmacist. Yeah. I don't think he had a team of pharmacists. No, just one. I think it was yeah. just a one guy. It was, what was his name? Charles somebody. Um, in Waco, Texas. He had a lot of syrup flavors, like fruity syrups, like cherry and, and all these flavors floating around in the air. And he loved the smell of it. And he decided that he wanted to create a soda that he could serve that would kind of embody all of those scents. And so he came up with, you know, a lot of different trials and served it to people that came in. And eventually he found a combination of the 23 ingredients that we know now. The Dr. Pepper bottles, these were glass bottles, they had a circle logo and it said 10, 2, and 4 because it was the Pepper Upper. And I don't recall, but I, re I remembered it was because it had a little cocaine in it. And so <laughs> it, would, it was 10 in the morning, <laughs> 2 in the afternoon, and 4 in the afternoon to just kind of give you that little boost. What's our first question? What would they Google about pharmacy school? Are there pharmacy school scholarships? Of course. There's scholarships for just about everything. I myself applied for one and was able to get it, and it takes about 20% of my tuition off the bat. So it's, it's good to at least apply for some. Second no. question. Don't rip it. Can okay. pharmacy students dispense medication? Oh, legally or? Are we talking about legal oh, medication? Oh, medication, no. not drugs. drugs. Sorry. Oh, yeah, There's yeah. You can, dispense. you can dispense medications. Um, student pharmacists can do all the things that a pharmacist can do, but it has to be under the direct supervision of a licensed pharmacist. So, yeah, sure so they yes. can. Short answer, yes. They can dispense medications, absolutely. If they got dispensing drugs. I'm supposed to peel it. Oh, sorry. My mind feeling. You're so appealing. Pros and cons of <laughs> pharmacy school. Oh, I ripped it again. <laughs> You're good at that. Pros and cons. Um, I would say really the only thing negative about it is that you have to dedicate a lot of time to it. It is a full-time program. They even tell you in your first few weeks that they don't recommend working more than 10 hours a week while you're attending school. And there's a reason for that because it is, it, the course load can be quite a bit but not to say that it's like undoable because there are a lot of people that do it and get through it and survive it. But it does take the majority of your time. It might seem like, oh, you have this, uh, this enormous amount of course load and you can't do anything else. You can't have fun on the weekends. You can't do anything like that. Me and my study group, we play Mario Kart at the end of most study sessions <laughs> for like an hour. We still have fun. We still learn. We still get good grades. Yeah. So yeah. it's doable. And then there are there are a lot of good things about it. Um, we mentioned salary earlier. That can be a definite bonus. Um, you make a lot of good friends. Like I mentioned, my study group. They're some of the closest friends I've had in a long time. Okay. Day in the life at pharmacy school. Oh. As a pharmacy student, <laughs> I can tell you about that. Most of the time, it's, you know, you wake up, eat breakfast, go to some classes, get lunch, go to some more classes. <laughs> and then go home and study. That's really the majority of it. Like I said, you have to dedicate the majority of your time. I forgot Oakley. I forgot Oakley. I gotta walk Oakley or she'll be <laughs> mad at me. Yeah, she gets a walk every night and that's just kind of my time to decompress. And as I mentioned with my study group, we just play Mario Kart sometimes. So there is time for other things. 
All right, it says, who accredits pharmacy schools? Oh, I, it's, I, it's ACPE, ACPE accredits pharmacy schools, right? American creditors of pharmacy experience? Oh gosh, well, I think you got one word right. I'll take um, it. <laughs> it's the Accreditation Council for Pharmacy Education, ACPE, close. yeah, barely. But <laughs> it was really close. <laughs> Let's see, okay. Oh, which ISU pharmacy program is best for me? There are a few programs. There's the traditional PharmD program. It's a doctorate in pharmacy program, and it is the one that is being used now. We have the two years of, of pre-pharmacy, four years of pharmacy, and that gets you a PharmD degree. That's and, the one I'm doing. And that's the one Josh is doing, and he will, when he's completed, he will be Dr. Josh, and he will be able to work in, in the practice of pharmacy. We have a PharmD PhD program where you can get a PhD in biomedical and pharmaceutical sciences with your PharmD and that gets you into the research realm. Um, and I loved research so I went that route as well. Um, and then we also have a master's program in clinical psychopharmacology and that can be done to go into um, psychology, psychiatric treatment of, of patients in, in that field as well. So which one's right for you? It'll be which one kind of floats your boat and which one sounds appetizing to you, I think. Isn't there an MBA one as well? Oh, the dual degree, PharmD MBA degree. Yeah, good. And so that one, you get your PharmD degree, your pharmacist, and you also learn about business and how to run your own business. Oh, oh, not just is pharmacy school worth it, why is it worth it? So why is a pharmacy education worth it? You get, you get a pretty good secure paycheck and, um, and there's a lot of different things you can do with it. I'd list all the things I've done, but it would bore you. But you pharmacies, think, do you think it's worth it? Pharmacy's all over the place. So getting a degree in pharmacy, you can go just about anywhere and find a good paying job. All right. Why ISU for the pharmacy degree? Well, are you kidding me? Why not? No, so lots of reasons. ISU is, it's kind of an interesting program that it's one of the best programs in the nation and it's one of the least expensive programs in the nation. So you figure it out. <laughs> it's a no brainer, really. You come to ISU, you get a stellar education. You come out as a, a clinical pharmacist, a PharmD, with a lot of knowledge and abilities and experiences at about half the cost. Half the cost. Even the cost of living in, uh, in high, going to school, the cost of living is uh, a lot cheaper than a lot of places mm -hmm. in the U.S. do. So. A lot cheaper. And you can get in-state tuition if you've been an Idaho resident for a while. But the best part is you don't even have to be from Idaho to qualify for in-state tuition. There's a waiver that's quite easy to get that you can get in-state tuition. And even then, if you don't get that your first year, you qualify for it your second year because you lived there for a year during your first year. So, so it's really easy to get in-state tuition, which is cheaper than out-of-state tuition. And even the out-of-state tuition for ISU's pharmacy program is less than most pharmacy programs across the U.S. Yeah, that's true. And you'd only pay out-of-state for one year. Yeah. So the cost is very good. The education you get for that cost is phenomenal. Another neat thing about ISU for pharmacy program is that we have three campuses. We have a campus in Pocatello, Idaho. We have a campus in Meridian, Idaho. And guess what? We have another campus in Anchorage, Alaska, associated with UAA, University of Alaska, Anchorage. We have a pharmacy program in Alaska. So we, all three of the campuses, attend class at the same time together. It's pretty cool. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.